Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Lexus IS250. This is a four-door sedan with seating for five. And this particular trim is the IS250 with all-wheel drive. Proximity sensors in the front and rear for assisted parking, fog lights, as well as LED low and high beams. This vehicle has a coefficient of drag of 0.29. The trunk can be opened with a key fob or with the button on the trunk when the key is near. Decent sized trunk with 60-40 split folding rear seats and it does include a spare tire and tools underneath. This IS250 includes the luxury and navigation packages and MSRPs for $46,500. So let's take a look underneath the hood. Gas shocks for support. And as you can see the engine does have a large plastic cover but it can be easily removed. So checking for serviceability everything is pretty accessible. You've got your windshield washer fluid up front brake fluid reservoir in the back, you've got your oil fill, 0W20, and your coolant fill, two spots for that. On the left side of the engine you've got your oil dipstick and your engine air filter and this has simple toolless uh, snaps to hold that in. The battery is also located all the way back on the passenger side so I love seeing this and not only is it in the ideal spot from a weight distribution point of view but it's also very easily accessible and you can get to both the positive and negative terminals. This is a 2.5 liter V6 engine with aluminum block and heads. It features 24 valves, dual overhead cams with intake valve timing as well as exhaust valve timing. The engine features direct injection and a compression ratio of 12 to 1 and produces 204 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 185 pound-feet of torque at 4800 RPM. So let's follow the path of the intake air. For the air to get to the air filter it must first come through the front grille up through these vents and into this intake here where it's then fed through the filter. After passing through the filter it then travels to the electronic throttle body and from there it travels into the plastic composite intake manifold and as you can see it splits into the six individual cylinders. After passing through the engine the air exits on either side of the cylinder bank. This is a true dual exhaust all the way back. So the exhaust heads towards the rear of the vehicle and each side has an individual muffler and tailpipe. Power is sent to all four wheels through a six-speed automatic transmission. These are the optional 18-inch aluminum alloy wheels. Staggered tires front and rear with 225 over 40 Bridgestone tires up front. And 255 over 35 tires in the rear. 11.7-inch ventilated disc brakes up front matched with a double wishbone style suspension. As you can see, good use of aluminum in the lower control arm and the knuckle for the upper control arm to reduce unsprung mass. And here you can see the steering linkage, the anti-roll bar, and to the right of that, the drive shaft. 11.4 inch solid rear disc brakes matched with a multi-link suspension setup. This is a five arm multi-link suspension and you can see more the use of aluminum with this upper control arm, this lower control arm as well as the knuckle. Separate spring and shock to allow for a bit more space in the trunk so that coil spring doesn't intrude on the space. The third and fourth arms on the left. You can also see the anti-roll bar which is fairly small. And the fifth and final control arm is where the spring is resting. So let's have a look at the interior. Smart door handles which unlock the vehicle when you grab onto it. You can also lock it by pressing in the front. Leather seats with 10-way electronically adjustable front driver's seat and three memory settings. Now one of the first things you'll notice when you sit in the vehicle is this hump located in the footwell and it's located directly behind the gas pedal. So if you are using cruise control and you want to take your foot off the gas pedal, you're basically going to want to sit it in this area where this hump exists. So sitting in the front driver's seat, very comfortable, soft leather. There is plenty of space for your legs aside from the fact that there is that hump down there, but there's plenty of adjustability so if you do have longer legs it isn't difficult to fit. Also there's a padded cushioned leather uh, where your knee would rest or if it were to hit, so that's nice to see there. The steering wheel leather wrapped, soft leather feels pretty good. You've got your audio controls as well as Bluetooth controls and you can also select through different menus on the front display. Push button start stop, you've got paddle shifters, you also have automatic front headlights as well as automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. For the infotainment system you have the standard Lexus system where it has this mouse like setup and I actually really like the way it works, it kind of locks into place on the different things you select and so you can go into your navigation, your climate controls, your apps, uh, 
media, connect to your phone, things like that. The other thing I'll mention is the sound system in this is quite good. Both the Lexuses that I've tested out have had excellent sound systems with deep bass and basically no rattling when you turn up the volume quite a bit. The cabin stays, you know, quiet and you just hear the rich music. Now, not only can you control the climate system with the display up here, but you've also got controls up front. Though the buttons on this do seem a bit cheap compared to the rest of the vehicle, and as well as these media buttons, they've just kind of got a cheap feel to them. Now, you do have heated and cooled front seats, which is pretty nice. One of the things about leather is, you know, they kind of have a narrow temperature range in which they're comfortable, but when you have heated seats and cooled seats, you know, you kind of eliminate that as being a concern. You've got this selector here, so you can select eco mode, normal, and sport mode. And basically what this does is alters the transmission. So in eco mode, you'll use higher gears. In sport mode, it'll downshift to lower gears and use lower gears more often. You also have a snow mode, and you can turn off the traction control, and if you hold it, you can even turn off the stability control. As far as storage, you've got this compartment here in the door. You also have this center compartment, which includes an auxiliary jack, as well as two USB ports. You also have these two cup holders and the glove box, though the glove box is a bit small. Regarding visibility, out the front and to the sides is pretty good, though out the rear is a bit limited. The rear window is a bit narrow. Uh, that said, you do have blind spot detection systems in the mirrors, and there's also a reverse camera. Sitting in the rear, both headroom and legroom are a bit cramped. As you can see, my knees are up against the back of this chair. The front driver's seat is adjusted to where I will be driving. Now you do have power windows back here and you also do have AC vents as well as this fold down armrest which I do like the way they've incorporated the cup holder into this. There's just a button you can press and then it pops out so you can still make use of the armrest and have separate cup holder. Now for the center passenger this very large drive axle hump basically makes the center seat useless so really you're only going to be fitting four people in here. And just to show what it's like here I am sitting in the rear seat in the center. Okay, so let's take it for a test drive. Now, one of the first things you'll probably notice is everything about it is pretty comfortable. The ride is comfortable. You know, you don't feel much vibration through the seat or the steering wheel. It's quiet uh, and it's just a smooth ride overall. Now, where you'll start to get disappointed is when you put your foot down. The 2.5 liter V6 has 204 horsepower versus the 3.5 liter V6, which is in the IS350, which has 306 horsepower. So for about $3,200 more, you can get another 102 horsepower, uh, taking the zero to 60 of this, which is at about 8.3 seconds to 5.7 seconds in the all wheel drive IS350. So it's a significant difference in power. The other thing is, You've also got significantly larger brakes with the IS350, and it's only a $3,200 upgrade. Also, on top of which, the fuel economy is only one MPG worse, both city and highway, for the 350 versus the 250. So the power plant in this IS250 is just overall a little disappointing because you can get so much better of an engine with the IS350 for not much additional cost without sacrificing fuel economy. Now it does sound good, I'll give it that, and it is fun to drive. It seems to handle pretty well, not too much body roll. But like I was saying, the acceleration just isn't really there. And it does have paddle shifters like in the GS350 that I tested uh, with a six speed automatic transmission. And just like in the GS350, they are a bit slow to respond. And that's just typically the case with these automatic gearboxes. Now the steering effort is a bit high. It seems like it does take a good amount of force in order to turn the steering wheel. On top of which the throttle pedal, depending on where you place your foot, also requires a decent amount of effort. Now the brake pedal feel is pretty good. It is a bit sensitive, but it is intuitive and it has a nice progressive spring rate to it as you press it down and depending on how much force uh, you want to brake. Even though it doesn't have all that much power, it is still fun to drive. I just think it would be quite an improvement to have that 350 power plant inside of this. So I've completed my fuel economy test run. This is about a 53 mile course, primarily highway with some city and hills mixed in. This car is rated 20 miles per gallon in the city and 27 on the highway. 
and as you can see it achieved 29.1 overall on my test course. So driving on the highway doesn't seem to be too much uh, road noise. This is a pretty rough highway that I bring it on to test this out uh, and I did take a decibel reading. It seemed to be averaging around 73 to 75 decibels uh, but overall you know it is a pretty quiet ride and it's pretty comfortable. You don't feel a lot of that rough road uh, coming through the body itself into the seat or into the steering wheel. So overall impressions of the vehicle, starting with the things I'm not so fond of. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say, you know, the engine is a little bit disappointing. Uh, it doesn't have all that much power to it, and it's just a cheap upgrade to go to the 350, which offers you so much more without sacrificing fuel economy. So I think that's the right decision to make, is to go with the 350. Also, the little hump, uh, whether that be a transmission or center differential or whatever it is behind the throttle pedal, uh, that's kind of an annoyance. Uh, and finally, the rear seats, you know, there's not all that much space back there and the center seat doesn't really offer any leg room at all. Now, onto what I do like. I do like the way the engine is laid out. Uh, everything's accessible up there and I like the way they've placed the battery. I also like how quiet the ride is and how comfortable the ride is, you know, not a lot of vibration, and it also seems to handle pretty well. And finally, the sound system in this is quite good, just like the other Lexus GS350 that I tested. Both of them, you know, you can crank it up really loud and you're not hearing all the panels in the car vibrate, which happens in almost every car that I've tested so far. So I do like the way they've implemented their sound system and reduced vibration uh, rattling from it. So overall, it's been a fun car to drive. The one thing I would just recommend is to go with the 350. You know, you get so much more benefit without that much added cost. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.